We are back with Kerry Washington, who is joined by Bridget Amiri, a deputy director of the ACLU Rep Reproductive Freedom Project, and one of the lawyers in Kerry's documentary, The Fight, which was quite good, I watched it last night, who are battling to stop the Trump administration from trampling on voting, abortion, immigration, and gay rights. Welcome to the show, um, Bridget, and of course, Carrie's been here. So, Carrie, you're producing this documentary about the ACLU. How did this idea come to you? You know, I, I do want to say, I think it's important to say that the ACLU has sued every single president in the history of this country, Republican or Democrat, that they are in the business of protecting the rights of all people. Um, but I will say it was seven days in the Trump administration, and um, he enacted the Muslim ban. And a lot of us thought, okay, it's begun, right? Like this thing that we were afraid of, this attack on civil rights and civil liberties, it's here now, and what are we gonna do? And I was glued to the television, watching the crowds, you know, out in front of the federal courthouse in Brooklyn, and out walked the ACLU lawyers, and they announced their victory and I just thought, this is it. Like, these are our real life Avengers. They are gonna be on the ground defending civil rights and civil liberties. Who is gonna be with them? Like, who's gonna follow them around with cameras to capture these epic battles? And luckily for me, the filmmakers who made Wiener, extraordinary filmmakers, they were having the exact same idea on the exact same night. And so we all came together to make the film together, Edgeline and Simpson Street. Wonderful. Well, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was fantastic as well. Um, and uh, Bridget, uh, you are fantastic. So, Counselor, in the oh. documentary, you are fighting for the rights of a 17-year-old refugee that you call Jane Doe. You say she was a preg uh, was pregnant after being raped and was being refused an abortion by the Trump administration's Office of Refugee Resettlement. How did you first hear about the story of Jane Doe and other girls like her, because she isn't the only one, and was she finally able um, to get cared for? Yes, and thank you so much for having me, and thank you for the kind words, and to Carrie for all of her amazing work on the film. Uh, so uh, we heard about uh, these young women that we represented through a number of sources, including anonymous tips and dedicated advocates on the ground. And that's an important point I want to make, even though I'm the one in the film on this case, that there's a huge team of people, both at the ACLU and other organizations across the country, that were helping these young women, and I'm so grateful um, for that. That. But most importantly, I'm in awe of the bravery and courage of Jane Doe, who stood up to the Trump administration when they told her that she wouldn't be allowed to leave the shelter for any abortion-related appointment. And she was able to get the abortion that she had decided to have after weeks of a court battle. She was pushed further into her pregnancy, not knowing if she would be forced to carry her pregnancy to term against her will waiting for word from a court in Washington, D.C. to see if she would be allowed to obtain the abortion. Luckily, she did, and the other young women that we represented did, and Jane Doe went on to carry on the case as a class action to make sure that this didn't happen to other people like her. You do incredible work. Uh, Bridget, in the documentary, we also see the ACLU come under fire, uh, severe criticism after they fought for the right of the white nationalists to hold a rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, in 2017. As we know, it turned violent and people were hurt. In my opinion, those white nationalists were using hate speech. What is the difference between free speech and hate speech? And why do you think the ACLU should protect hate speech, if you do? So the Constitution prohibits the government from suppressing speech, even speech we don't like. If we start uh, to suppress hate speech, who decides that? Is it you or the government? And as David Cole talks about in the documentary, do we want the government really to be the arbiter of what speech can be allowed, um, particularly under this administration? And the harder case, I think, as the film shows, is what cases will the ACLU take? And those are robust and respectful conversations as you see in the film. And there isn't a one size fits all approach. And we are continuing to have those discussions. And it really is on a case by case basis as how we move forward. We learn from the Charlottesville experience and we have this dialogue in the organization. Carrie, I was telling our producer Summer that um, I should have worked for the ACLU instead of the, the Justice Department. <laughs> but uh, what are you hoping that people 
uh, especially young people, take away from watching the stories in the documentary? Because that was my immediate takeaway. Yeah, well, I think there's so much hope in the film. You know, they, I, I, I mean, I say it all the time, but they really are real life Avengers. They are superheroes for justice. And I think when you watch the film, you realize that, wow, when I wake up in the morning and I don't know what to be more stressed about, the attack on abortion rights, the attack on LGBTQ rights, the attack on black bodies by police, um, the attack on immigrants' rights, there's, there's so much to be anxious about. The ACLU is in the trenches on every single one of those battles. And so it, seeing them in action really fills you with hope. And so I think the film is so inspiring. I hope it inspires a whole new generation of young lawyers to pursue yes. justice mm -hmm. and civil rights work. But I also hope it just inspires all of us to say like, well, I don't have a law degree, but what do I have? What can I give? Can I make phone calls? Can I volunteer? Can I drive people to the polls to protect the right to vote? Um, can I make sure I fill out my census or call 10 friends to fill out their census? Can I bake cookies and, and sell them and send that money to the ACLU? Like, no matter who you are, you can give in some way to this fight. And I think the film really inspires people to do that and, and helps you ask of yourself what you can do. <sighs> Absolutely. And you ladies are angels and you're fighting the good fight and thank goodness for the ACLU. Thanks to Kerry Washington and Bridget Amiri, Magnolia Pictures and Topic Studios are releasing The Fight in select theaters and on video on demand today. We'll